Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Wednesday digital edition of Intentional Talk presented to you by Toro. It's Millar and Rose. Kevin, I'm smiling. Do you know why? Is it because we have baseball back, Rosie? We do. We do. There were some serious labor pains. No joke over the last few months, but it's back. Uh, we're looking at a late July start date. Everybody's going to report on July 1st. There's still a lot of stuff to comb through, including the health protocols, which are most important moving forward. But let's take a deep breath. Let's celebrate the game that we love. Let's start with where were you and what was your reaction when you found out we're coming back? Okay, I was sitting here. I kind of knew a little bit because I had a sneaky little inside scoop that this is possibly going to happen. We were on the boat dock the night before. I'm like, no, I'm not believing this because my little source, it didn't happen the time before. So originally about midnight, I got some scoop. The next day I was sitting at the golf course and it, and it happened. I got the text. We're having baseball July 1st and then July 24th. Let's go three weeks. They get spring trained. So it was one of those things. It's the hopeful stuff. We're all hoping for baseball. People at the golf course asking me every day, we're going to play, we're going to play, we're going to play. Hopefully this happens and the COVID-19 doesn't stop this. All right, hold on one second. Yep. Who's your source? I can't tell you that's your source. Get close. Who's your source? He, he might be the 6'6 fellow that used to pitch three-time World Series champ John Lackey maybe on, oh, yeah, the, on the down low. He's so well connected in the baseball. It's like <laughs> it's, it's Ken Rosenthal, it's John Paul Morosi, it's John Heyman, it's Tom Berducci, and it's John Lackey. There's your power five insiders. Where were you at? I was just chilling at home, uh, probably looking at my social media since it's all I do. I haven't moved in the last three and a half months from my chair downstairs. <laughs> so. Okay. That's easy. What's one of the biggest storylines that we've forgotten about that now is back? Boy, Kev, you made the hard transition there. It was like I thought maybe you were going to continue on with a sentence, but you just threw out a question. Yep. We're back, everybody. Um, yep. For me, it was that, you know, and I started reading stuff again last night just to kind of refresh my memory because you forgot who went where and all that stuff. Like, I forgot that Anthony Rendon had signed out there in Anaheim. Because um, mm -hmm. to me, that's going to be an exciting one-two punch. I mean, it, you know, for years, we begged the Angels to kind of start making the right decisions. They've always poured money into the franchise, but they've never made the right decision, like who to surround Mike Trout with, talent-wise. Well, finally, they made the right decision. Is it going to be good enough to get in the postseason? I, I don't think so, but at least that it's, it's an exciting lineup for me. Yeah, for me, it's going to be Mookie Betts, the Dodger trade we talked about. If we didn't have a season, Mookie Betts would have went from Boston to the Los Angeles Dodgers, never playing a game. It's like, what just happened? The Red Sox would have gotten Alex Verdugo. Yep, uh, he wasn't healthy, had a bad back. Now he'll be back. So that's the one storyline that's going to be interesting to see Betts and that Dodger blue and see what they can do. Yeah, that's good for Dodger fans. They at least get to see him for 60 games. Although I have an inkling that maybe he will end up uh, getting a contract extension. Maybe I should ask our MLB Network insider, John Lackey, for more information. <laughs> All right, Kev, uh, there's a bunch of guys, if the season had started on time, that we would not have seen because of injury. Who is the guy that's now rearing to go that you're most excited to see? You're talking about from injury. I, I, I think the Alex Verdugo situation in Boston. Mm -hmm. Okay, so once, you know, this is a talent. It's a young kid that we really don't know the ceiling. We see, we saw a little bit of it with the Dodgers. We see that he can do a little bit of everything. But when you hear bad back as a young kid, you're like, oh, God, is this going to linger through his career? No, he'll be back sometime in June. Well, guess what? Here we are, baseball's back, and he hasn't missed a game. So hopefully he's healthy in the Red Sox Nation. They can kind of like maybe kind of put a bandaid over that Mookie Betts trade if Alex Verdugo turns out to be a star. Yeah, no, I think that's a good call. The Dodgers really missed him in that five-game playoff series loss that they had to the eventual World Series champion Washington Nationals last year. For me, it's Giancarlo Stanton. I really just want to see the guy be healthy. Now, his first year up in New York, his power numbers were decent, 38 and 100. Last year, he had 59 at-bats total. And this is going to sound weird. I think not having fans in the stands might help this guy a little bit. I think he's been so worried. Hmm. You give me a funny, weird old man face. Why? Well, yeah. I I know the whole I know the home crowd at times will get the boo birds out with the old for fours and four strikeouts, but I don't know if that helps a big fella like this because you feed off that energy when you're a home run hitter. Not when you're striking out five times a game, which we saw a couple times early in his career, and then they they'd light him up. Yeah, but you think about it, though. You're feeding off walking the plate because when he hits 50 a year, that's the energy you're looking for. 200 strikeouts are part of what you do. I get that. The, the one other guy is a guy who would have been there on opening day. But have you heard that Anthony Rendon has lost 25 pounds during quarantine? What? I, don't, I, I didn't know he had 25 to lose, Chris. You and I have 25. I didn't think he did. 
I know. So I'm, I'm kind of curious. That's not an injury thing, but that's a, that's a dietary thing. I can't wait to see him. Maybe he'll wear a Speedo out at first base. You never know. <laughs> well, let me ask you a question. There's so many new rules now. It's going to be funny to see and kind of, you know, unique. So what's the one big rule uh, that, that stands out to you that's going to be a unique scene that you're looking forward to it? Well, I think the question should have been uh, about the extra innings one where we're going to start with the runner on second base, second base. right? Um, uh, would you like to rephrase the question, Your Honor? Yeah, I would. By the end of the season, do you think we're going to love it or hate it, the new rule in the extra innings where you get to start with a runner on second base? Go. I think we're going to love it. I really do. Now, we played that way with Brady's Little League team. It's called the California, you know, extra inning rule when he was like seven years old and we had tournaments to play. Yeah, so I'm used to – and it was the coolest thing in part because Brady – um, Brady got the hit, you know, he let off the next inning and there was a kid on second base. So he got the hit that put us up. So that will always have a near and dear moment to my heart baseball wise. I think it's going to be fun. And I think it, I think it's a thing that you're going to see in the future. Are you excited? I'm excited for it. Yeah. I mean, I understand it. I, I like the 18, 19 inning games once in a while that we get. I'm like, Oh goodness gracious. But the problem is as a player, you go in your extra innings, you're trying to launch and win the game. So that's the pop-up, the pop-up, the pop-up. And that's where they loiter. This is different now. You know what? We're going to have to get them over, maybe a bunt, maybe get them over, get them in, sack fly. And also we got some action. Okay. Last one. Uh, give me a, a, team that is favored to certainly make the playoffs and maybe even the World Series and give me a sleeper that we should keep our eye on. Well, I'm going to stay with the Astros as my first question. It'll be so interesting in a 60-game season. People forget, I know Garrett Cole's now in New York, but they still have a Justin Verlander sitting over there. Maybe a Lance McCullers now is healthy with that nasty slider. You've got a great ball club and they went through a lot before in spring training of all the stuff that went on with the trash can hitting. This is interesting now that the calmness is kind of set in. We'll see how this goes. I like the Astros. And the second part of your question is Cincinnati Reds. We got Moose over there, Nick Castellanos over there. There's a team, Trevor Bauer's been very active on Twitter. Pretty interesting club. Sonny Gray's kind of set into a scene. I like the Reds. As I don't know if we can call them a sleeper because they're kind of built to win that World Series. So we'll see what they do in the National League. Yeah, I don't know if you heard about the Reds' recent um, coaching changes, but they've added Aubrey Huff as their bench coach and Kurt Schilling as their pitching coach. <laughs> there I, you go. I think the Reds are going to be a phenomenal watch this year. It's going to be great. Um, for me, it's weird calling them a favorite because everybody just looks at them as the, as the little engine that could. I think the Tampa Bay Rays are built for a 60-game season. Ooh. They've got so many arms, and I really think that you're going to have to stockpile at this point because you're going to – I think you're going to have to manage these games like they're playoff games, almost every single one of them. Like, if you have the lead after five, you can't be like, oh, you know what, it's, it's June 22nd. If we don't win this one, we still have two and a half months. Like, no, you, you have to step on the accelerator. So I think that Kevin Cash will have that ability that a lot of other managers won't have. For the sleeper, I, please do not let me kick myself. The San Diego Padres. Ooh. I know. I know. They, I just, once again, I mentioned bullpen. You know, they added Pomerantz in the offseason. Yep. Uh, Andres Munoz is a kid that can just throw it through the wall. Um, you know, we all know about Yates, and they added Emilio Pagan, uh, which I thought was a really nice pickup for them. If they can get any sort of starting pitching, mm -hmm. and I need Machado to be Machado and Tatis to stay healthy and Hosmer to be the Hosmer of old. Come on, Padres, do something for me. Yeah, I like that call. I like do that you? call. I, well, I do like the call. It's just like you said, you, you sometimes get in that San Diego feel where yeah. that's like the, you know, the East Coast has got that. So now with 60 games, we're going to see if they can get some, a little bit of that East Coast mentality in San Diego. Well, I can tell you this. We're looking forward to as much as we've loved the, the digital platform, and it's very important for, for what we do and how people are consuming stuff, you know, 10-minute shows is not how we're built. So selfishly, we are excited to get back on television. Uh, check your local listings for the time and date in your area. Now, we'll be back eventually at 5 o'clock Eastern, we imagine, unless the bosses have gotten wise and killed our show. You haven't heard that, right? Or should I ask Lackey? Let me, let me check. Let me check. Hey, Lack, are we still on air? Yeah, yeah, he says no problem. We'll be starting soon, Chris. We'll be starting soon. Just stay with him. Okay, great. So uh, make sure you tune into MLB Network for the latest news and information. IT will be back on the air, and we cannot wait. All right, Kevy, baseball's back, my friend. I can't wait. Let's go, baby. Let's go. We'll see everybody on Friday's edition of IT presented to you by Toro.